Welcome to this quick look at Perry Miniatures Plastic Austrian Cavalry Box Set. Now you can see there's um, a box here before you, uh, the classic artwork from Peter Dennis, which is very nice, uh, and that it contains uh, 14 figures in total. Just to have a look at the back of the box, you can see there's a little bit of literature there just describing to you some of the history uh, of the units with, held within the box, a small guide on how some of the parts fit together, which is just there, uh, and then some painted examples of what you can do with the contents, which is, uh, in this case, one crassier, uh, a Chevrolet Leger, uh, and another Chevrolet Leger, uh, with a different helmet option from a different time period. Uh, and apart from that, there is the other traditional feature, which is an actual sized image uh, of the miniatures within the box. Anyway, the box is pretty straightforward, but let's get on to the most interesting, interesting thing, which is the contents. So this is everything that you get inside the box. So first things first, you get the traditional uh, and nicely researched and illustrated guide to the contents of the box. Uh, in this case, showing you all the different Carassier regiments, uh, their facings and other distinctions, including their button colors, uh, and also differentiates between the time periods um, that you'll uh, find those cavalry units serving in, because you have the option within this box to use different helmets and different distinctions to differentiate between the period that the cavalry are meant to be representing. So in this case, you've got the Carassier regiments and their facings from 1798 to 1801, uh, and then just below it, the Carassier facings from 1801 to 15, and next to it, a, a nice upscaled uh, color version of what the miniatures can end up looking like. Then inside the guide, it's been broken down further, so on the left-hand side here, you've got the Dragoon facings from 1801 to 1815. On the right-hand side, you've got the Light Dragoon facings. Uh, now these regiments were reorganized into Dragoons and Chevalier after 1801, but with the contents of the box, you have the option to create any of those, um, just using different helmet versions. And as you can see, there's some illustrations uh, to guide you with that, including some extra detail that I didn't know on the saddlecloth edging changing, which I quite easily would have made a mistake on had that not been in there. Uh, but going back to the side of the page, the Dragoons at the top and then the Chevalier regiments at the bottom, including uh, the complicated fact that some of them wore white and could be mistaken perhaps for Dragoons, but the difference there uh, is in the uh, different heads that are supplied with the horses differentiate between light cavalry uh, and heavy cavalry. In addition to which, just in the centre, there's an explanation of the different helmets and the types of crests that were used according to time period, so you can get the right heads on your figures depending on which era the regiments are coming from. Then finally on the back, there's some very nice painted examples uh, of what you can do with the miniatures which also are useful in explaining some of the distinctions depending on whether or not they're an officer and some of the details that need to uh, be represented for those. The distinction on the Carassier, it pointed out quite usefully that you have the option for this quite characterful option of putting a fatigue cap on one of the troopers and there is a separate helmet that you can use for that as well. And then also how the picket stakes were used uh, and how you should arrange uh, some bits and pieces of the equipment. And that's the instruction manual. As usual, very good, very informative, uh, and very visually appealing uh, for a Perry product. Next, the uh, fairly classic green plastic bases. Uh, I wouldn't be using those, but always useful for people that might be starting out in the hobby, or you can use them to create all sorts of other things. And then the real meat of the content, which are the figures themselves. So you get one command sprue, which you can see here. Now, the difference between this and the troopers is that the horses and the riders are all on the same sprue. And you can see here, uh, that's one horse for each, uh, and then you've got the horse head options depending on the weight of the cavalry you're representing, the different head and helmet options depending on the era and regiment that you're representing, and then some options for the trumpeter uh, and officer, or alternatively the uh, the guidon bearer, if you were going to go with that option instead. And then this is the reverse. So you can see here, these are some of the torso options. You can see that's the officer's cuirass on there. Uh, the trumpeter doesn't have a cuirass option because they didn't necessarily wear them as far as I'm aware. 
and then the head options for the figures and as well as the horses. I think it was a good idea to give uh, different horse head options in there because that's an easy way of distinguishing them without then needing to have necessarily different sized horses as well. If, uh, if that was the level of detail you wish to get into. Um, then apart from that, so there are four sprues of horses with three horses on each and then four sprues of troopers. So this is the horse sprue. And as you can see, very straightforward. Um, three different poses for the horses. Presumably you could mix these halves slightly differently. On most peri kits that I've used that have got uh, that are four cavalry, that plastic kits, um, with a little bit of adjustment occasionally, you can mix these bodies to get, again, slightly different poses, or they just check that they look um, normal and natural and not like the horse's legs are all trying to go off in different directions at the same time. Um, but yeah, there's little to show on here apart from the fact that there are the six head options, so you can have the uh, different uh, bridle and saddle options for the types of cavalry. So pretty straightforward for all four of those. And then this is the trooper sprue. Uh, so you can see here, you can make up three figures and you've got all the different torso options depending on the regiments you're going to uh, represent. You've got different versions of the um, picket stakes being slung on the side of them um, and picket stakes with carbines depending on which type of regiment you're representing. There's some of the different taller crested helmet options uh, and then also you do have a vari variation in what kind of pose you can have them in. So you can have them at rest with a sword shouldered. There's a variation on attacking poses with different levels of action and sort of dynamism being sculpted into them and then you've got the classic uh, swords pointing forwards in the charge and there's three of those then for each of those figures. But that is the sprue. We'll have a quick closer look at some of those parts. You see there some of the short crests, some of the uh, backs of the torsos, you can tell by the cross strapping which ones are for the caresses, some of the picket stakes and bits and pieces, one of the shouldered sword versions. There's a sheathed sword there um, in a scabbard which is presumably for the version of the figure who's um, taking his helmet off uh, and is slightly less active. And then those are all the other arm poses as well. And there's that spare helmet and fatigue capped head for that option. And that is it. And there are four more of those sprues. And that's the contents of the box. Now, hopefully you found this useful uh, and I tend to use this background so you can get an idea of relative scale and size. Uh, each one of the squares on here is a centimetre, um, just so you know that for judging it yourself. But pretty straightforward box. Again, I think this is an example of good uh, value from Perry as well, that you can get 14 figures out of a, a £20 box. That's a decent regiment size, I think, for, for most people who tend to use maybe around 12 12 plus figures, although of course Austrian cavalry regiments quite large, Carassia regiments slightly smaller perhaps, but the Chevalier and Dragoons up to six squadrons at once of quite large squadron size that if they haven't had much attrition that's going to be quite a few figures, but very good value for what you get in the box. Um, excellent information provided in the form of the uh, additional instructions and information here for the historical accuracy side of things. Very nicely sculpted. And on top of that, a great uh, range of options. Uh, the fact that you can create any of these sort of light, heavy, and sort of medium, if you like, if you were to refer to Dragoons as that uh, cavalry from within the contents of a single box, I think that's, that's excellent value. And for example, if you're going to break the box down because you wanted half a dozen of one, half a dozen of the other for skirmish level wargaming, you can quite easily do that with no trouble at all. You can just build the figures however you want. And so here are some of the completed Austrian cavalry. On the left-hand side here, I've built a couple of Chevalier, and on the right-hand side, four of the Carassier. Now, the primary difference between the two, visually, uh, is that the Chevalier do not have a um, cuirass, obviously, on the front. Uh, second is that they have a carbine and a picket stake uh, attached to them, rather than just a picket stake, although there are alternative ways of building that as to according to what you want to represent, because some of the Crassier may have had carbines, you might want them to not have any picket stakes, for example. 
Um, so that's a certain matter of choice, but that's one of the principal differences around that side of the miniature. And then the other is that on the front of the horses, the Chevalier Gere miniatures have a more complicated X-shaped strap on the bridle running across their face, uh, whereas the heavy cavalry head that's available in the set has two parallel straps, one running across the forehead and one running across the nose. And that is the other principal difference between them uh, on the base of the horses. Uh, other than that, I will show you the other side of the miniature, just for comparison. So that is a cuirassier, and they have a chevalier next to him. Uh, and there's little functional difference other than that. The way that you differentiate between the weights of the cavalry, as already mentioned, is based on the bridle on the head uh, and the torso differences and a certain amount of equipment difference depending on choice. Uh, in this case for these miniatures as well, I've gone ahead and put on the uh, later helmet and the taller comb with the plume intact uh, because they will be for late 1813 running into 1814 as part of my collection. In terms of the ability to build these with as minimum fuss as possible, um, apart from the cleanup of the flash and the mould lines that's required, again this set in common with um, some of the others that I've talked about and the review I did of the Franco-Prussians, uh, the mould line runs down the centre of the front of the heads, which I guess just must be, a, again, a perpetual issue with how they have to cast them, because if they were sideways, they'd stick out of the sprue differently. But then again, there are parts on some of these sets which are quite bulky and stick out either side of the uh, what would be the flush plane of the sprue, at least as much as the heads would do if they've been turned sideways. Anyway, um, so apart from all the cleanup that needs to be done to that to get rid of all the mould lines, um, the different horses' heads, as you can see down the side here, uh, sort of fixed on behind behind the cheek and at the neck. Um, and they don't all fit quite flush. And so you might be able to see, looking at the sides of the different miniatures, there are gaps behind that line and you can see them. And that's something I might go and fill um, uh, with whatever putty or, or materials I decide to put in that gap just to make it flush because it'll still be fairly obvious when the miniatures are painted. Um, this is a good example of that, actually I'll move that one to the front and you can see just behind that line there is what I'm talking about. Um, in addition there's some slight gaps, for example where at the front of the miniature just here, where the saddlery meets the neck and the reins for example, but that's not, not a big deal actually, paint and the primer will conceal that more than anything else. Uh, and then the other issue maybe is the slight alignment of the two halves um, of the different horses. But that's the biggest problem for me is the uh, it's not the fiddliness of trimming down even the straps on the picket stakes or anything. It's actually just that the, the heads don't fit um, perfectly well together. And then I had to do a bit of bending to make the reins that are protruding fit the sides of the faces and things of that nature, which is a little bit irritating. It's require a little bit more work to make them look um, up to scratch before they get primed. But, um, you know, those frustrations aside, um, it's a very nice kit. Um, it's excellent value for money. Uh, I think as with all Perry Mitch's kits and as mentioned earlier in the review. So whilst again a bit fiddly because they are um, you know, finely detailed and plastic miniatures are going to require uh, a bit of bit of cleanup, um, I think they're well worth it. So um, I would encourage you if you are thinking of getting some Austrian cavalry to consider them, um, but other alternatives are available. Anyway that was just a quick look at the Perry Austrian cavalry box set. So I hope to see you in the next video and happy hobbying.